Some of you may already know this. YouTube's announcement on January 25, how they are going to continue improving their recommendations by eliminating more and more of videos like mine and like videos that an awful lot of people post, videos about the truth, videos that go against the establishment narrative. All right, I'm going to read some of this because it's in line with an article that I want to read. But when recommendations are at their best, this is according to YouTube, when recommendations are at their best, they help users find a new song to fall in love with discover their next favorite creator, or learn another great recipe. Oh, wow. This is what social media and news is all about. Entertainment and nothing of substance nothing about educating oneself about the very many problems that we have in our society nothing uh, no videos about engaging one uh, to learn what is taking place so that they can participate in this quote-unquote democracy no it's about recipes songs and discovering your next favorite creator. Our society has become something so foreign to me that it is difficult living in it. But let me go on. That's why we update our recommendation system all the time. We want to make sure we're suggesting videos that people actually want to watch. You might remember that a few years ago, viewers were getting frustrated with clickbaity vid videos with misleading titles and descriptions. You won't believe what happens next. We responded by updating our system to focus on viewer satisfaction instead of views, including measuring likes, dislikes, surveys, and time well spent all while recommending clickbait videos less often. More recently, people told us they were getting too many similar recommendations, like seeing endless cookie videos after watching just one recipe for snicker doodles. Wow, we have been so unbelievably infantilized that it's sickening. More recently, people told us they were getting the similar recommendations. Okay, they were just getting too many cookie videos. We now pull in recommendations from a wider set of topics. On any given day, more than 200 million videos are recommended on the homepage alone. In fact, the last year alone, we've made hundreds of changes to improve the quality of recommendations for users on YouTube. How's the quality of your recommendations? How's the quality of your homepage? Because I don't even bother to go to my homepage much anymore because what they are putting on my homepage the, the videos that um, I should be getting because I subscribed to these channels. I get videos that are three years old. I might get, for some of my subscriptions, a video that was recently uploaded. But mostly what I get, I, I, it's like, is this my homepage? Really? Seven years on YouTube? Well, uh, not with Never Lose Truth, but long enough for YouTube, certainly with their algorithms, to understand what I might enjoy watching.
and I get no videos like that. I get a lot of, on my homepage, mainstream media news. I don't subscribe to them, but I'll get them on my homepage. So, they think they've improved the quality of our homepage and recommendations. You tell me what you think. We'll continue that work this year, including taking a closer look at how we reduce the spread of content that comes close to, but does not quite cross the line of violating our community guidelines. Wow. So now, now you have to start thinking, okay, uh, has my video come close to violating those guidelines? Well, they're going to begin reducing recommendations. Borderline content, that's their term for it, borderline content and content that could misinform users in harmful ways, such as videos promoting a phony miracle cure for a serious illness, claiming the earth is flat, or making blatantly false claims about historic events like 9-11, the conspiracy videos, the truth videos. They will be uh, less recommended. They are, but look, this should not come as a surprise to anybody who has been uh, on YouTube for a while. Um, maybe those who are just now coming to uh, the truth about certain things, maybe those who are just, I hate these terms, but coming, uh, quote-unquote, awake, they might, because they don't know, that YouTube has been incrementally ditching truth. So it, it, it for anybody who has been here for some length of time, this is not a surprise at all. Um, and they claim that our videos will no longer be recommended, but you can still see them. You can still have access to the videos. We just will not ever be recommended. And YouTube thinks that it strikes a balance between maintaining a platform for free speech and living up to our, YouTube's responsibility to users. Uh, their responsibility is to keep entertaining their users, to keep infantilizing their users, to keep infantilizing those who remain willfully ignorant and just want to be entertained. A oh, will will give you all you want, but we're not going to give you anything that counters the official narrative. because we control information. We here at YouTube are Google, and Google will control how you think. That's what's going on. So they're going to have a cross between machine learning and real people. So real people are going to be watching videos, and they're going to determine whether or not oh, you come close to violating those community guidelines. They will determine whether your content is borderline content so that they can instruct their algorithms to make sure that you never get recommended. This should upset everybody. Wired is all for it. And Wired actually has decided that our videos are toxic. Wow.
Yeah, YouTube will crack down on toxic videos, but it won't be easy. Toxic videos by limiting how often they appear in users' recommendations. In November, Facebook announced plans to reduce the visibility of sensational and provocative posts in news feeds, regardless of whether they explicitly violate the company's policies. So you don't now have to violate the policies to get ditched, you know, put into that uh, memory tube. Goodbye. It's what Facebook and YouTube and Google, you know, the Silicon uh, tech giants, what they determine is okay for their users on these platforms to see what they determine. Wow. And Wired, this uh, magazine, this website, it, it, they're all for it. Promoting, well, we know that YouTube promotes only authoritative news outlets, mainstream media, on its home page during breaking news events. Have you, well, when we have breaking news, have you gone to YouTube? Their home page, it's all mainstream media. Nothing like controlling the narrative. But YouTube also partnered with Wikipedia. That's why you see, you know, you post a video about chemtrails and, well, underneath your video, you will have that Wikipedia. Um, informing the video watchers of what they have determined is um, realigning the misinformation of the geoengineering chemtrail videos, Wikipedia will bring the users of that video back into the official alignment by posting what a contrail is. That's why you see on a lot of videos Wikipedia posting uh, underneath videos on YouTube what climate change is. When you post a video that is full of facts that they are lying about the climate change, Wikipedia will bring you back into the lying alignment, the lying official narrative underneath that video. Yeah, <laughs> this is the world that we're living in. And what is really upsetting is hardly anyone cares. So uh, they claim that, yeah, here they say it's partnered with Wikipedia to fact check, <laughs> fact check, okay, common conspiracy theories, and it's even spent millions of dollars sponsoring video creators who promote social good. See, the problem is YouTube's uh, recommendation algorithms, they've been trained over the years to give users more of what it thinks they want. Well, that is what the recommendations are for. So if a user happens to watch a lot of far-right conspiracy theories, this whole article is so blatantly um, in, it, they're just in with the lie the far-right conspiracy theories. The algorithms is likely to lead them down a dark path to even more of them.
So YouTube has to stop that. They have to protect their user from oh, going down that dark path. Are you kidding me, Wired? All right. We're not children, okay? We're not. <laughs> right? We're not. We can exercise our free will, can't we? We don't need, you know, the YouTube police to make sure that we don't go down a dark path. So YouTube is hoping to throw people off that trail by removing problematic content from recommendations. It's problematic. It's problematic because it counters the official narrative. The truth is not problematic. It's only problematic when you're living in a lying society and there are agendas about to take down that society. That's when it becomes a problem. So human video raiders around the world will answer a series of questions about videos they watch to determine whether they qualify as borderline content. Their answers will be used to train YouTubers, uh, the, the YouTube algorithms, to detect such content in the future. YouTube sister, con uh, sister company, Google, uses similar processes to assess the relevance of search the relevance. Uh, unclear what signals these human raiders will use. The spokesperson didn't give out their name, won't share any additional details, except to say that the system will look at more than just the language in a given video's title and description. So they'll be watching the videos. These changes stand to improve platforms like Facebook and YouTube. Wired, you think this is an improvement? You sick, twisted little bastard. Whoever the hell wrote this article. So many people are, yay, yay, we want more lies. We want more of the official narrative that is spoken by daddy and mommy. And we want to keep all of the adults watching cookie videos and recipe videos and, oh, listening to songs that they can fall in love with. People are already quick to claim that tech giants are corrupted by partisan bias and are practicing viewpoint censorship. And that's, and this is what Wired says, and that's in an environment where both YouTube and Facebook have published their community guidelines for all to see. What the hell does that have to do with... So what? Your community guidelines are published for all to see. Does that mean that YouTube is not then practicing viewpoint censorship? Okay, so you not only have this sick, twisted bastard who loves the lies, the official narrative, and get rid of everybody who has a different view, a different opinion, um, and, oh, those who have actually done the research and want to post on the truth, get rid of all of them for, for the entertainment that YouTube will provide. They're also just, well, stupid. But here, they've drawn, YouTube and Facebook, they've drawn bright lines about what is and isn't acceptable behavior on their platforms. No, they have not drawn bright lines. In fact, their community guidelines are so vague that anybody can fall into it. So wired, you're just... Oh, what are you, you know? <laughs> I'm so unbelievably sick. I am so sick of this. Now both companies are, in a way, blurring those lines, penalizing content that hasn't yet crossed it. Um, 
yeah, okay, good that you at least acknowledge that, but you don't seem to care that they're blurring the lines when the lines were blurred anyway, and you didn't even have to violate the community guidelines to have your channel done away with. Um, so the penalizing content that hasn't violated, where is your position on that, Wired? The shift also would not stop, say, a 7-Eleven truther from subscribing to a channel that only spreads conspiracies. YouTube, like Facebook before it, is trying to appease both sides of the censorship debate. It's guaranteeing people the right to post their videos. It's just not guaranteeing, guaranteeing them an audience. <laughs> so, you got free speech, but you're talking to yourself. Well, is that really free speech? No. That's called censorship in a free society. Wired. All right. I don't like, you know, um, it, it's really very, very upsetting. New York Times YouTube moves to make conspiracy videos harder to find after years of criticism that YouTube leads viewers to videos that spread misinformation. That's mainstream media's job. Oh, right, New York Times, you are mainstream media. This society has become so sick and twisted. And it is very hard to live in it. I'll link below, you can read it. You know, it's funny because <laughs> there was... Um, mention of Buzz, BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed. Is it in this article? I don't think so. I read another article. They were talking about BuzzFeed. And BuzzFeed is a news outlet that just within like the last week had been called out for posting fake news. Mainstream media is so repulsive and it's unfortunate that we have an awful lot of Americans who too are, I'm sorry, repulsive. And that's the majority. So I will link below to this, Beyond BuzzFeed, the 10 worst, most embarrassing U.S. media fails on the Trump-Russia story. But you can also just do research on all of the fake misinformation propaganda that you're getting from mainstream media. Google and YouTube, Facebook also right in there promoting all of the fake news, the misinformation news, the propaganda and they are wiping out truth. Yeah, BuzzFeed is the first um, that they're talking about here. And um, RT hacked into and took over C-SPAN. That was Fortune magazine. It was a lie. It was a lie. Yeah, and you very rarely get a retraction from mainstream media. Oh, but if they're forced to do it, they do it on page 22 in smaller type. Um, Russian hackers invaded the U.S. electricity grid to deny Vermonters heat during the winter. <gasps> Washington Post. And the Washington Post, when they, well got called out, hey man, you're posting something that's not really true. They kept diluting the story with editor's notes. 
to admit that the malware was found on a laptop. Well, they finally had to admit it, that the, it was found on a laptop not connected to the U.S. electric grid at all until finally acknowledging days later that the whole story was false. Lying sacks of shit. We are saturated with them. Well, if you really, really, really care about the truth, then you too would be upset. So we've got the shadow banning that's occurring. I've had uh, so many of you guys tell me you're not getting notifications. You're, you've been unsubscribed. And uh, a recent comment that now I can't remember what it was. But um, it was a subscriber telling me that just trying to get to my videos, they couldn't. Other subscribers say that they're not having problems, you know, watching other videos, but trying to watch mine, um, I don't have any audio, or it's buffering and won't stop buffering, they can't play it. They have all tactics to make sure that your content, you know, will not be seen, and well, if they can't stop it completely, then it's going to be only seen and heard by a few. That's the way it's going, and that's the way it's just going to continue to go until the truth is dead. Right now, it's on life support. They're pulling the plug. So, the next video, I'm going to read this. Technology. Distracting. Disturbing. Deceiving deluding ourselves to death. Great article. But I will link below to the YouTube crap that is taking place.